Now listen, it can happen to everyone to end up with a bottlenecked system, a bottlenecked PC build. And that's very frustrating because you know you paid for a certain level of performance, but you're simply not achieving that. However, today we are learning from this poor guy's mistakes and showing you how you can avoid this in the first place. And if you do end up in a situation like this, how you can fix it for cheap. So with that said, welcome back at MultiPSUs and here we are on how to fix a CPU bottleneck and a thermal bottleneck also. Now, what this guy did is he got a PC built by a friend of his. Now, if your friend is subscribed to Emotion PSUs, that's probably a good idea. But if your friend isn't, I would seriously reconsider it. Jokes aside, he recommended he built an RTX 5070 gaming PC with a Ryzen 5 8500G, one of the worst CPUs from the 7000 series of Ryzen. Why am I saying 7000? Because this CPU actually shares the architecture with the Ryzen 7000 and it just has a better iGPU, which to make space for, they disabled some other components inside of the CPU. This means that this Ryzen 5 8500G is a worse performer than even a Ryzen 5 7500F. The guy probably thought he was getting like a little bit less than Ryzen 9700X performance, but that's far from the truth. So even though it has an Infinity palette RTX 5070, which genuinely is one of the worst models I've seen ever, it's too thin, it runs too hot, this guy still isn't getting the performance out of it at all. With this CPU, he's basically getting a little bit over RTX 3070 performance out of it. So he came to me and he was like, we need to do something. So I told him, listen, we need to upgrade your CPU and slap a better cooler on it while we're at it, because he was also using stock cooler. So the APU was also running overheating. It was terrible to begin with, but it was also running really bad. So the easiest upgrade path is going to be what we did, and it is the Ryzen 7. 9700X because these reviews are very cheap nowadays you can find them for around 200 bucks brand new but if you scour the user market I've seen them go for under 200 bucks and they are still relatively new because even if the guy bought it at launch it was just over one year ago. So there's still a relatively new CPU you can buy on the used market. Now, while we're at it, I decided to throw an all-in-one on it since the guy literally had the space on top of the PC. Like maybe he just did it because he was on a budget and he planned it from the beginning, but he told me that was not the case. So I've got the brand new Enermax Leakmax 4 360. Now this thing is pretty cool because we're saving a lot of money since we don't have RGB fans but we still have an LCD screen. Now, as you can see, the LCD screen is currently turned off because for it to work, it has a USB interface. You need the software and you need to be logged in into Windows. So right now the PC is not connected to any monitor. And so we didn't log in into Windows. And so we don't have the only one displaying the information, but I will show you guys um, how it looks when it's fully built up. And it actually is a pretty interesting screen because you can rotate it physically by removing a dimmered glass on top of it. And then you can actually remove the LCD screen and rotate it how you want. It's a pretty cool design, never seen it, and I like it. Now, onto the only one itself. It is a pretty good model. Again, it comes in at under 100 bucks. I've seen it in the US go as low as like $80. So it has extremely good value in terms of value for money. And it comes with the fans pre-mounted, which is something I care a lot about. And with just two cables plus the USB interface to connect. So you connect the pump to the motherboard, you connect all the fans which are pre-daisy chained to the motherboard, and you connect the USB. So it literally takes five minutes to install. It is compatible with all the sockets from AMD and Intel. And on AMD here, you just slot the bracket for AMD, screw in a few fans, it's gonna be a super easy swap. With the CPU swap and everything, it took us maybe, maybe half an hour to get the whole thing dismounted and then remounted. So super easy, and that's important on all in ones. I dislike the ones which are all just dismounted and this is the way to do it. Now, performance and noise-wise. First of all, I want to show you guys the bottleneck fixed. So take a look at the five strike now. Extremely high score, in line with what we're expecting, even though I always seem to get a bit overstock performance somehow. But more importantly, you can see how evenly matched the CPU and GPU are. So we fixed the bottleneck completely, and now we actually have a GPU bottleneck, which is what you want. A system with no bottlenecks basically doesn't exist in reality. You're always gonna have a component that's better than the other, but we always want the CPU to be that component. So you can just slot in a better GPU in the future, and in general, you have space for your tasks in the background, maybe Discord, maybe other things. So this is exactly what we want. And 
97 on Lex with a 5070 is a great match. It may not be the best value. You may want to get a 9070 XT, sure, but it is a great match. Now, don't even get me started on what you could do now with this setup that the guy is not doing because I don't know why, honestly, he should. But if you went ahead, did some undervolting on the CPU, did a little bit of overclocking, just a 200 MHz offset, as I show in my tutorials, man, this thing would go really fast because the thing is, Ryzen automatically adjusts to a higher thermal headroom. So now that we have this only one, as you can see, even in Prime 5 we're staying under 70 degrees, and uh, the CPU is boosting a lot higher in clocks. If you saw the clocks in the Firestrike bench, you saw we were going all the way up to 5.7 gigahertz at stock because we have a good motherboard, we have PBO, and the CPU automatically adjusts. But if you go ahead, and tweak it manually, you can get so much more. The sky is the limit, really. Not really, 15% is about the limit, but it's free 15%. Well, you paid for it by getting the only one, but your slot in an only one gets 15% extra performance by simply undervolting, it's great. The only one itself is also running very quiet. You can't hear the pump at all, and even the fans are super quiet. So all in all, moving on to the conclusions, if you are CPU bottlenecked, if you can, just upgrade your CPU. But don't get top-of-the-line model 1900X3D. Just get a mid-range Ryzen 7 or Corujo 7, which is going to serve you well, or even, really, a Ryzen 5. But make sure it is properly cooled, so you can go ahead, make your tweaks in the BIOS, do some undervolting, some overclocking, and get it running right. I was also very happy to try out this water cooler from Enermax. It is a great performance, runs cool, runs quiet, very easy to install, and it works great for AM5. So with that said, also please do not buy a G-Series APU unless you want to run it with integrated graphics. And with that said, let me know down below if you've had a similar situation in the past, and if so, how you did overcome it, and drop a like and subscribe. Bye bye.